Up with him like you're sitting right in his face, like you already made it to glory. Yeah. Just to see you face to face, oh Jesus, Jesus, Christ, Christ, 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 Jesus, Jesus,
morning, saints of God, amen, the Lord has been dealing with me about, amen, anxiety, especially this time of the year, amen, because people, you know, this is the holiday season, amen, we just had Thanksgiving, Christmas is coming up, New Year's is coming up, and you know, and people, you know, who may not, may have lost some loved ones over the years, I know for me, I, I've lost several, amen, and even my wife and I were sitting down uh, yesterday at the hotel, and and, and we're talking, and I, I started talking about my, my sister, which we lost earlier this year. And uh, and I was like, God, I miss her. And, and my eyes started tearing up because she, she was faithful with calling me, faithful with calling me to pray for me, just faithful, and, you know, always telling me she loves me and how proud she is of me and, and just all kinds of – and I miss that because – you know, she's my oldest sister, and she was just always encouraging, remember the encourager, and I miss that. I miss, hi, my darling, you know, just nobody can say it like her, <laughs> and so I miss that, and so I understand why people and how people, whatever it is, whether it's a loss of a loved one or a friend or a man or you're not in close relationship with somebody or maybe your finances are, aren't where they need to be and, and you want to buy gifts and this and that. Listen, don't get caught up on the gifting. Amen. The greatest gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. Offer him up to somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that is good. So please don't don't break your bank account. Don't, don't charge up your credit cards buying gifts and stuff. The greatest gift is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So offer him up. And so I just want to uh, bring some comfort to people's hearts on today. Amen. And let you know you don't need to worry about it. Hallelujah. Amen. In Philippians chapter 4, we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Glory to God. And this is the King James Version. He says, and I'll be back and forth with NIV and King James Version. But he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. So he says it twice. Is that right? Amen. So that means you need to rejoice. <laughs> he says, let your moderation be made known unto me, all men. The Lord is at hand. Here's the part I love. He says, be careful for nothing. That, that word careful means anxious or, or worry. He says, don't worry about nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, supplication or request, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto who? God. Amen? Let your request be made known unto God. Watch this now. And the peace of God. How many know God got peace? There's no peace like God's peace. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds, and minds, and minds, through Christ Jesus. Then he says, in verse 8, he says, finally, brethren, or sistren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So what you're thinking about is important how your life is. If you think on bad stuff, that's what you're going to have. If you think on good things, that's what you're going to have. Amen? What are you going to choose to think on? Don't have no stinking thinking like George Myers say. Amen? Amen? He said, those things, Paul says, those things which I have both learned and received, or he says, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. So Paul said, I've been the example for you because I'm following Jesus Christ and you need to follow me as I follow him. He said, do these things, and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen? So dealing with anxiety, saints of God. So you might say, well, what is it that causes anxiety? 
what causes anxiety and, and temptation, amen, to get out of control, amen? I think the things in life that cause us anxiety are the things that are out of our control. Let me say that again. It's the things in life that we have no control over causes us anxiety and worry. We can control the amount of work that goes into a project, but we can't control the project's success. We can start a journey, but we can't control if an accident will end the journey too soon. We can ask people to do things for us, but we can't control if they will do them right or even do them at all. We can express love for someone, but we cannot control if they will love us back. We can try to keep shame secret. Hello, somebody. We can try to keep shame secret, but we can't always control if the secret gets out. Are you anxious now? <laughs> I think that is a great temptation to try to control the things that we were never meant to control. How many of those are some things that you just not going to control and you were never meant to control them? Like people. Like your wife. Like your husband. Help somebody say help somebody. Amen. <laughs> He said, cast all your cares upon him because he's the one that cares for you. Amen. I learned to say, Lord, that's your child. Please deal with her. <laughs> Many people would be tempted to step outside of God's ways to gain control. They'll try to love, love potion number nine. All kind of cookbooks and and they'll, then they'll resort to force. I mean, no, you can't force nobody to do nothing. You're either going to be dead or locked up. Amen? You can't force nothing on nobody. You, th that will get you in trouble. Or we try to control everything we possibly can around the uncontrollable thing. Hello, somebody. So let's look at an example in 1 Samuel and... King Saul. Amen? The Bible says in the 13th chapter, beginning at verse 5, and the Philistines gathered themselves together to fight with Israel, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and people as the sand which is on the seashore in multitude, and they came up and pitched in Michmash eastward from Beth Avon. Is that what the Bible say? Uh-huh, the Philistines had a great army. When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were distressed, sound like they was worried, then the people did hide themselves in caves and in thickets and in rocks and in high places and in pits, trying to find any place to hide. Where are you hiding? What are you hiding from? And some of the Hebrews went over Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. As for Saul, he was yet in Gilgal, and all the people followed him trembling. They were scared. Hello, somebody. And he tarried seven days according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. Samuel is the prophet of God, giving him direction. Amen? But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Now, he was given specific instruction to stay at Gilgal, right? And Saul said, bring hither a burnt offering to me and a peace offering. And he offered the burnt offering. So Saul is now stepping out of what the direction that he had. Let me tell you something, when God gives you a direction, please follow it. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offerings, behold, Samuel came and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him. Uh-huh. And Samuel said, 
what hast thou done? And Saul said, because I saw that the people were scattered from me, that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash, watch this, therefore I said I, watch this, Samuel said, or excuse me, Saul says, said I, the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication unto the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, and offered a burnt offering. Saul, oh, that's not what you were supposed to do. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord, thy God, which he commanded thee, for now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. If you would have just followed direction. So, so the point is this. Saul missed his blessing because he didn't follow instruction. Because he was doing something that was out of his control. If he would have just followed what the Lord's direction was, God would have gave him a kingdom. Forever. But look now. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. In other words, your reign is over, brother. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Hallelujah. Now, if Paul would have, or Saul would have just rejoiced, no matter what the army that was coming against him, if he would have just held his peace, if he would have just cast all his cares upon the Lord, if he would have just been still and know that he is God, hallelujah, and begin to rejoice, he would have been all right. Amen? We just read that, he says, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. So what happens when you have no control over something, amen, that you have no control over? What do you do? Rejoice. Uh, somebody, somebody was listening. Somebody was listening. Is that right? You got to rejoice. Is that right? Rejoice. Saul said, Samuel said, what have you done, man? Hey, Amen. You should have just rejoiced. And so the problem is anxiety can get us in trouble. What to do with it? What do we do with it when it gets us in trouble? We need to rejoice. So it don't get us in trouble. Amen. Not be happy all the time. It didn't say be happy all the time. Yeah, happiness depends on happenings. If ain't nothing happening, you're not going to be very happy. Hallelujah to God. But you can rejoice always. Hallelujah. You can always rejoice. Amen. And so, but rejoice in the Lord. Regardless of our situation, God remains the same and he is worth celebrating. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's worth celebrating. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's been times in my life where I was concerned about some stuff. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do. And, and, and the scripture said rejoice. He said, well, if you can't do nothing and you've done all you can, like the song say, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Hallelujah. You prayed and you cried. You prayed and you cried. After you've done all you can, you just got to stand. Amen. And, and God said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We mess it up when we try to fix it. And God said, you have no control to fix it. And the more you put your hand in it, the more worse you, it becomes. And God said, just stand still and watch me work. How about giving me some praise? How I many you know when you give God praise, it brings your blood pressure down, all your worry, all your anxiety. It just goes away. You forget about what you were stripping on. I, there's been many times I've got into a, a, a praise and worship thing, amen, and I forgot what I was like, oh, well, it came to pass. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm not going to trip. 
Amen. He says rejoice. Even in the most difficult situations, we can be glad for a visit from a good friend. I mean, all of a sudden you get a good a call or, or, or a drop by. And say, Hallelujah. I didn't even know. <laughs> God just sent somebody. Just like on yesterday. I mean, I wasn't feeling bad, but I sent a stranger. Hallelujah. To let me know my light was shining. Glory to God. Isn't that all right? Man, that made me, whoo, I was like, boy, I felt the Holy Ghost so good. I was like, go ahead, Lord. Thank you for showing up and showing out. Amen. You sent me to San Jose to send some, an angel to tell me that I'm all right. Amen. It, it is the same with, so with rejoicing. We got to rejoice, right? Amen. In the most difficult situation. Anybody been in a difficult situation? Amen. And so it's the same with God. God will show up in your life. We do not ignore the situations that we find ourselves in, but we allow his presence to bring us joy. Hallelujah. How many of you know God's presence will bring you joy? Amen. Take the focus off yourself and your anxieties and place it in the solid rock that is of God. How many of you know he is our rock? Amen. So, so you cast all your cares. Amen. That word casting means to launch out. Amen. And so every care that you have, just give them to God. Just keep, just keep casting them on the Lord. The problem we have is once we cast them, we go back and get them. Reel them back in. God ain't never told you to reel them back in. He told you to leave them with him. Amen. Take your burdens and your cares to the Lord and leave them there. Amen. Don't pick them up again. Glory to God. You got to trust God. Watch this. Some of you might not be feeling good in your body. Amen. And you and you're tired of what you're going through. Honey, I said you're tired of what you're going through. Amen. How headaches coming, feet hurt, back hurt, neck hurt, and head hurt, all kind of stuff. About taking pill after pill. How many of you know you got to trust God with it? Hallelujah to God. Don't worry about it. He'll bring you through. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ask me how I know. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so this is not a cure for anxiety. Amen. It's more a preventative than care than a cure. By rejoicing. Amen. Rejoicing is a preventative maintenance plan. Like taking your vitamins. Make sure that you fill your day with praise for God, but be sure to have some concerted time each day that celebrates God's goodness. Do you ever stop and think about how good God is? See, 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 see we, get, we get caught up on, on our situation, or how we feel, or, you know, maybe our finances is a little funny, or, or whatever it is we might be going through, amen, and we forgot to give God thanks for the good part. I mean, it's good the fact that you can reflect on the fact that your body might not be feeling good because you might not even be here had it not been for the Lord, which was on your side. Amen. Thank God. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah to God. I th and how about start rejoicing in whatever it is that you're dealing with? Lord, I thank you that my headache is going away. Hallelujah to God. Lord, I thank you that, that my, my back feels good, Lord God. I thank you, God, that my body is getting in the, my neuropathy is, is healed in the name of Jesus. How about giving him thanks? When he says in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We give too much glory to the problem. And not enough to the problem solver. How about giving glory to the problem solver? Amen. And then, and then leave it alone. Sing a song. Listen to praise music. Read a song. Speak your praise. And worship to him. How about getting you a dance? Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord. You get your day. Hey, hey, glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm coming out. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And meditate on his goodness. In other words, do something. Hallelujah to God. Get up and do it. We he said, oh, my God, whoa. I don't feel good. 
You sitting there saying, I don't feel good, and you speaking everything into existence. Every, I don't feel good. My head hurts. Uh, oh, my God. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. So, so change your language. Amen. And say, I feel great. Hallelujah to God. Amen. And you won't be lying because faith calls those things that are not as though they were. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so all that other stuff got to leave when you start speaking the truth in love. Is that right? Amen. He says, you, you got to be gentle with it. <laughs> Amen. Gentleness. What, what does he mean by gentleness? Amen. Gentleness means, I, I think Paul is talking about being gentle with the people around us here. But as we apply it to preventing anxiety, we also need to be gentle with ourselves and our own plans. Hello, somebody. See, we make plans, but we don't include God. See, see gr growing up, <laughs> I, I'm a type of person that internalizes things. I don't always externalize it, and, and I internalize it, and that causes worry. Amen? Because I keep it on the inside. Amen? And, and uh, even as a child, I would, I would, whether it was good or bad things, amen, I love family. And so we're getting ready for a family reunion, and we're going out of town. And I'm like, I'm 10 years old. We're going to drive. we driving all the way down south to Arkansas, Louisiana. I'm 10 years old. And all of a sudden, we, before we load the truck, my head is pounding. It was my anxiety, my anxiousness for leaving that got my head hurting. And then I started dealing with that as a, as a young man, amen, dealing with that, whatever came, you know, getting ready for, to get married. Here come this headache. No wonder you had anxiety. <laughs> 34 years later, we still married, though. Hallelujah to God. But, but, but can't help, I, did, I had some anxiety that came along with it. Amen. I'm 22 years old, about to say I do. I'm like, oh, God. Hello, somebody. I'm sure she was saying the same thing because at the altar, she was shaking like a leaf. <laughs> Amen. So, so watch this. We have to be careful about our planning and put, make sure you put God in it because you can't say what you're going to do, amen, except God allow it to happen. Hallelujah. And so watch this. We can get anxious when there are uncontrolled variables in our plans for life, for our work, for our family, for, our, for the weekend, for the new five minutes, for the next five minutes. Watch this. I mean, you don't know what the next five minutes is going to offer. You, you don't know. Amen? So, so hold things lightly. Be gentle in your hand, including your plans. It's all right to plan. In fact, you should plan. Amen? The, the saying goes, those that fail to plan, plan to fail. Amen? So, so you want to make plans, but you do it if it's be the Lord's will. Ask me how I know. In, in James, amen, and I'm reading the NIV, he says, in James chapter 4, picking up at verse 13, he says, boasting about tomorrow, now listen, you, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to do this or in that city and spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. This is what we're going to do. That's the plan. Is that right? <laughs> Why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? What is your life? You are just a mist, a vapor that appears for a little while, and then it vanishes. You don't know what's going to happen. Amen? So he says, instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or do that. If it is the Lord's will. Hallelujah. Because it might not be his will. Hello, somebody. And so... You can only do what the Lord will allow that's in his will. And watch this. You make this plan, then all of a sudden God changes direction. 
you won't have to be so upset and Satan and falling apart because what you were so anxious for and excited to do, your plans, all your planning, you did all that, and then all of a sudden God changed direction. Huh? Wait a minute, Lord. You, no, we're we not going to do that. And if you violate what I just told you, you're going to end up like Saul. Hello, somebody. And so it's very important, saints, that you acknowledge God and allow him to direct your path. Amen? And hallelujah. And so you got to give it to God. Amen? Not, not just a tagline that says, Lord willing. Amen? We'll do this or that. It's not, no, you got to be serious. Amen? At the end of every stated plan, it's not a magic phrase. Make it a true attitude. That ought to be your attitude when you're making plans. Hallelujah. If it be the Lord's will, amen, I'm going here. If it be the Lord's will, we're going to go there. If it be the Lord's will, I'm not going there. <laughs> but God. Amen. Folks try to get you to go places. Amen. Well, we need you over here, Pastor. Well, let me pray. <laughs> over to God. Amen. And so you got to trust God. Is that right? Amen. It relates to trusting him. Let, let me give you Jeremiah, very familiar scripture. Jeremiah 29 11. Amen. And I'm reading the NIV. Many of you are familiar with the KJV, but I'm reading this portion for, for on purpose. He says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Now, the children of Israel were in bondage during this time because of disobedience. And so they were in bondage. But God said, I, I, I'm remembering you, amen. I'm going to bring you out of this. He says, he says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Watch this now. He says, you will seek me and find me when you Seek me with all your heart. See, that, there, there's a key verse right there. See, some of us seek him with partial heart. Some of us seek him with a wrong motive because all we do is want. Amen? But you, when you're seeking him with all your heart, it, your worship starts off with thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah to God. Amen? Instead of coming out with a list of I do's, hallelujah, you need to come out with a list of praise. Lord, I give you glory, amen? And so that's loving him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Sometimes you just have to say, Lord, I don't want nothing. I just want to say thank you. I don't want nothing, Lord. Sometimes I just want to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah to God. And I believe when we learn just to say thank you, how many know God already knows what we want and what we have need of before we even ask him? And when we learn just to say thank you instead of coming with a list of I won't and learn to say thank you, I believe God will begin to pour out those blessings upon you, amen, because your attitude has changed and your heart is right towards serving him, amen. So he says, you seek me with all your heart, and that's what that really translates to. He said, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And will bring you back from captivity. They were in bondage. Is that right? Because of their disobedience. It, it wasn't because God sent them there for no reason. He allowed them to go into bondage because of disobedience. He said, I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you. <laughs> declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. God said, I allowed and I did all this to happen because of your disobedience. Because I, I haven't forgotten about you, though. I'm still available. Hallelujah to God. But look what he says in verse 10, which we didn't cover in 11 through 14. He says, this is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed from Babylon, I will come to you. And fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. They were in bondage 
seven years. But God still kept encouraging. Amen. He still kept encouraging and said, look, I know the plans that I have for you. Thoughts of love and of peace. Amen. I'm going to bring you out of this mess. But you got to stand still and see the salvation of, of the Lord. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? Ask God. What do you do when you have no control over what's going on in your life or the things that are going around your life? What do you do? You ask God and you trust God. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Then you will call upon me. Hallelujah. That's all he wants you to do is call him. All he wants you to do is ask him, amen, and he'll be with you. How many of you know it's not always easy? It's not always easy to trust, amen? Especially if we, hallelujah, we've been in this thing for a minute, amen? But, but trusting is a learned behavior. And that, that's why Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of the most quoted Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. How many of you ask the Lord to give you direction? Amen. Some folks are honest. Want to help you. You need to ask the Lord to give you direction and trust him. Amen. And, and if you're not sure of the direction that you're getting, amen, look for confirmation. Amen. That confirmation could come from a sermon. Can come from a Sunday school message. Can come from you reading your Bible. Can come from you watching TV and all of a sudden, uh, amen, God say, says something. Hallelujah. But he ain't going to say nothing on no record stuff. That's why you need to be careful what you're watching. No, no, seriously. Amen. The Bible said, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And so if you allow filth in your eye gates, amen, and your ear gates, then that's going to enter your heart, amen, and that's going to be the issue of your life. And that's why he says guard it. Hallelujah to God. So you got to be careful what you allow yourself to see and hear. Hallelujah to God. And so then sometimes you just got to be dull. Hello, Riley. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord, she cut up over there. And so, so watch this. If the preventative medicine doesn't work, amen, and what was that? Rejoicing, right? Amen. And you still get anxious, Paul still has something for us to do. That there are some people like me, like I said earlier, who internalize their anxiety. I'm not normally an anxious person. But, but if I do get anxious, it all stays inside my brain. Amen. And my stomach. <laughs> I use, like I said, I used to get headaches at a young age from anxiety. Amen. But others externalize their anxiety. They just go off on you. He hello, somebody. That's not always good either. Amen. They just go just go off on you. And, and, and if you and if you're that type that go off, could you eliminate the, the stuff that we gotta beep out? <laughs> Amen. Amen. That that is a tongue, but that's not a good tongue. Amen. That that's not a heavenly language. Amen. <laughs> so so if you can take out them four letter word and them f bombs and all kinds of stuff like that and the s bomb, if you can eliminate that kind of stuff. Amen. Because watch this. That kind of speaking, that kind of speech, is not of God. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not of God. That's that's not, you you are putting on display that you are not following God at all. Hello, somebody. Amen. And so if, if they're anxious, amen, we all know about it. If they if they excite, worried about it, we everybody know. Amen. Because they tell us. And if you're that type of person, you actually may have uh, a problem. <laughs> 
expressing yourself in a way that shouldn't be expressed. Now, internalizing it is not good either. But how about learning to give it to God? How about directing it to him? Hallelujah to God. Or how about waiting? And you don't know what that is. Let me just, let me just stop and just wait. I, I'm just going to wait on the Lord. He said, wait on the Lord, be of good courage. And he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And see, that's the problem with us. We don't want to wait for nothing. We, we the microwave, the microwave is too slow now. I mean, we put the time in, it's two minutes. Two minutes is still two minutes, y'all. And you looking at the clock, hurry up. Uh, and 30 seconds, you got a minute 30 left, and you talk about hurry up. It's still two minutes. Now, guess what? Before the microwave, you had to put it in the oven. You had to wait for the oven to warm up. Sometimes it takes 20, 30 minutes for the oven to finally warm up to get to the desired temperature. Then you had to put it in there and wait for it to get warm. And if it was came out of the freezer or the refrigerator, it's going to be a minute. And you're going to have to wait. But now that we got the microwave, the microwave is too slow now. Hello? You have to learn to wait, and that brings you anxiety because you don't want to wait. You want it now. And trust, thanks to God, I, it, I, I'm old enough to remember when I didn't wait. And God had something far better for me. Even as a young child, I wanted, I wanted, I probably said this story before, but as a young child, or uh, I probably was about 12 years old. Riley, chill out. <laughs> I probably was about 12 years old. And, and I wanted this bicycle. It was a BMX bike called a Mongoose. That Mongoose back then, back in the, what, eight, early, late 70s, early 80s. And it was $165 back then. That was a lot of money. But I wanted it bad. And I said, Daddy, whatever I got to do, I'll work for it. I, and so I would work with my dad. He was a contractor. Every weekend, I'd go work with my dad. i go, I'd be, I'd be with him. I'm working with him. I'm working with him every weekend. And so I'm helping him. And I'm like, Daddy, am I, am, am I getting close? He said, yeah, I'm going to get it for you. And so I would be so anxious and excited. We lived on, on Kelly Hill, and I, we lived block off the hill. And I would walk up on Kelly Hill, which was about a quarter mile from my house, to meet my dad before he got home because I knew if he got home and he took his shoes off, we wasn't going nowhere. So I'd meet him at the stop sign. Daddy, come, what, what are you doing, son? Are we going to get the bike today? No, not today. I was like, oh, man. So I ride with him back home. But that didn't stop me the next day from going back up there. And so finally, my dad's ready to take me to go get this bike. And I'm excited. I don't know. Now, I wanted a nickel-plated bike, which means it had no paint. It was nickel-plated. And, and a nice silver nickel-plated, little yellowish color to it. And, and that's what I wanted. But when we went to the store to get it, they didn't have it. They were out of stock. And all they had was a blue one. And because I was so anxious, my daddy bought the blue one. But it still wasn't the one I really wanted. And if I would have just waited, I would have got the one I really wanted. Some of you are wanting something now, but it's not what you really want. Let me help you. You need to wait to get the one that you really want. Hallelujah to God. Just wait on God. Hallelujah to God. And so I think that was over 50 years ago. And I'm still thinking about it. If I had just waited. <laughs> Hello? Hallelujah to God. I, I, amen. And, and there's some other things you should have waited on, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. There's, a, there's probably someone in your life that you cast your anxiety on. You call them up and have a little freak-out session. Or if you are like me, you cast all your anxiety internally. We need to learn to cast our anxieties on God 
and not on our friends or on ourselves. Amen? He cares for us, and he can do something about it. Amen? Just in the Garden of Gethsemane, he is our model. You remember Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane? Amen? He knew that the weight of the world was coming upon him. Is that right? And the Bible said he went into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And he was sweating as drops of blood. Is that right? Isn't that what it says? Because he was so anxious, hello, of what he was about to face. And you might say, well, why was he? He knew what the plan was. Yeah, he did. And that didn't throw out his plan. But guess what? Because he knew what the plan was, he needed some comfort in knowing that God was going to be there. And, and watch this. He asked God to, if this cup, and he knew it wasn't possible. He said, Lord, if it be possible. And he knew it wasn't possible. That sometimes that's a prayer you need to pray because you know it's not possible. Lord, if it be possible, hallelujah, to have this cup pass from me. What was the cup? The cup was the suffering of the sins that he was about to put on for you and for me. And, and for the first time in eternity, past and future, <laughs> amen, eternity past and eternity present, that he was going to be separated from his father because the wages of sin is death. And so Jesus had to uh, come to mind in the understanding that God is going to turn his face on me. And that was a problem for him. And so he went to pray. And so there's some things that you're facing in your life, whether it be physical, whether it be financial, whether it be uh, challenges on your job. Do all you can to handle it. And then when you've done all you can, stand and give it to God. Don't, don't do nothing extra. See, we get in trouble when we do the extra. God said, no, 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 no. You just need to stand. Uh-huh. Because, see, sometimes some people want promotion. Oh, that's a good one. Some people want promotions. I, <laughs> I was passed up. Like I said, I've been, man, where'd that come from? I've been, <laughs> I've been with the county for 26 years. Uh my first 10 years working with the county, I was seeking promotion. And I would get passed up left and right. I'm like, and I'm, I, I would ace test exam. I'd be number one, number two on the list, and they would just put somebody else. I was getting offended. And I was, I was like, Lord Jesus. And, and God said, just be still. He said, your time is coming. He said, in fact, work harder. I said, huh? He said, work harder. I'm so glad I was saved because, see, if I was unsaved and they was passing up on me like that, I'd have had a problem. Uh, yeah, they'd have heard about me. <laughs> but, but, but because I stood still and trusted God and not act the fool, I'm still there and in the highest promotion that I desire to be. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't want to go no higher. I'm good. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm good right where I'm in management. I'm right there where I want to be. I, I don't need to go no further. It's good. Amen. In fact, I didn't even know that I wanted that one. I, I, I filled the application out to apply for that position the last day. I said, Lord, I'm not sure I want this. He said, do it. Okay, I do it. All because I didn't know I didn't want the extra burden. Of the, of the stress, but it came out. It worked out far better for me, especially for ministry. Hallelujah, than it, than it did. So, amen, if I can just stay in there another four years, I'll be all right. But, but, but I said all that to say, if I would have went off on somebody, I wouldn't be in the position that I'm in now. Hallelujah. But, but there's people who have gone off and they in the position that they in now, in the same position, no promotion, all because they didn't give the problem to the Lord. So let that be a lesson for you. 
There's some people locked up in jail today because they didn't wait on the Lord. There's some people dead today because they didn't wait on the Lord. And so you need to learn their way, amen, like Jesus, and give it to God, amen, and be thankful. That's the problem. We, we, we don't have no Thanksgiving in our heart. We just celebrated Thanksgiving. But how many of you know every day is a day of Thanksgiving? Amen? By prayer and petition with Thanksgiving, amen, present your request unto God. Develop an attitude of gratitude. Hello, somebody. Start your prayers with Thanksgiving. There's always something to give God thanks for. Always. There's always something. The fact that you can open your mouth is enough to give God praise. And if you can't open your mouth, the fact that you can bow your head is enough to give God praise. Amen? Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks to all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And then learn to meditate on the good. Hello? Cast all your anxieties on him, right? Because he cares for you. Be thankful. Watch this. Always be joyful. That's the New Living Translation, 1 Thessalonians 6 and 16. Watch this. Never stop praying. Verse 17. Y'all see it? What does it say? Okay, okay, I didn't want to make sure y'all got it. He says, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ. Now, I just want to know, do you belong to Christ? Wait a minute, do you really belong to him? Hallelujah. Then you ought to rejoice always. Let me say it again. Rejoice. And then meditate on the good seat. Too often we magnify the negative. People start bringing negative stuff to me. I say, oh, hold on. Let, let's, can we change the subject? How, how about we pray for them? Because when you magnify, the Bible said magnify the Lord. That means make him bigger. But when you magnify the problem, you make the problem bigger. And no problem is bigger than your God except you make it that. Hallelujah to God. And so learn to magnify God, amen, and because he's the one that has the solution to your problem. Amen. Back to the scripture. He says, finally, NIV, brothers and sisters, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble or just, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Well, I don't know, Pastor. I have a hard time finding something that's praiseworthy. Let me tell you something. Jesus is praiseworthy. He's honest. He's just. He's merciful. He's lovely. Think on him. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. (laughs) If you know, watch this. Here's the line I'm going to give you, and I hope you get it. If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Hello, somebody. If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. Meditate on, it's the same thing as what you focus your attention to. So if you focus your attention on worrying, how about refocusing on meditating? Meditating on God's word. Hallelujah. Because he said, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. But, but but what if I don't meditate on it? What if I meditate on something that's negative? You're not going to, uh, what's going to prosper is negativity. <laughs> Hello, somebody. G- Jesus, you're true. Jesus, you're pure. It's, it says to meditate on whatever, all things that are good, noble, pure. 
So God created the earth and declared that it was good, right? The fall did not negate the goodness of creation. We do not admire God's creation and all things good in, in a godliness way. We meditate on it in his presence and we're and with thanksgiving. So in other words, we look at God, we look at creation and say, man, God, you, you are amazing. I don't know if you've ever been on a dark country night and you looked up, clear, dark country night, most beautiful thing you could ever see. And you look up in the sky and you see zillions of stars. And they bright, too. And you're like, wow. God placed every one of them in the status just absolute. So you can't see that in the city because it's too many lights. But if you go in the country, on a dark night, on a clear dark night, it is absolutely amazing to see the majesty of God. And then not only that, if you ever had an opportunity to be on a cruise ship, in the ocean. And you look out. Now, see, I love water. And you look out, and you can't see land nowhere. And you're like, man, God, how, how did you fill this place with all this water? That, he's the one that rolls out the sea. And it's like, hello? I'm like, man, you can't understand the majesty of God? Now, if God is capable of putting the stars in the sky and the moon and the sun, amen, and, and capable of, of doing all of that and doing all the earth work. What makes you think that he can't fix your problem? I mean, but, but see, when we don't stop to think of the majesty of God, then we begin to magnify our problem. And God is far bigger than any problem that you have. Amen? Amen? We're, we're good at meditating on what's false what is base, what is wrong, what is twisted, what is ugly, what is debased. We, we just have to turn on the TV and see everything that's wrong with the world. Is that right? And then we get depressed looking at the news. Turn it off. Hello? I'm flipping through channels last night. I seen some, oh, let me in, let me hear every turn. This ain't going to bring me joy. Amen. And, and so that's what you have to do. But see, some people like to be miserable. I don't understand it. I, I don't understand it. And then they want to bring you down with them. <laughs> no, I ain't going there with you. Amen. And so we, we, that's all we need to do. We only need to join the discussions. Amen. How about at work at the water cooler? Well, we don't have too many water coolers anymore. COVID. <laughs> we have decided that negativity is wisdom in our culture. We can name what is wrong with the most beautiful of things. Did you see the full moon the other day? Yeah, but you know, I didn't quite like the moon today. You know, it had, it was, the color was kind of off. I, I mean, we find something negative to be... Uh, isn't, it, isn't it a beautiful sunny day? Yeah, you know. Yeah, but I just see a few clouds over there, and you know. I mean, did, did you see the blue sky? Yeah, I did. But you know, off in the distance, I saw the cloudiness. It was a little gloomy. I'm like, really? Uh, but people do that, and then you're wondering why you got problems. You wonder why you can't sleep at night because you're busy watching snaps on TV. And now you're nervous. You can't even hardly put your key in the door coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? I mean, come on. We, watch this. We have to watch and receive things that are conducive to our joy, that are conducive to our happiness. Amen? Hallelujah. And so watching stuff like that is not going to give you peace. You're talking about, Lord, I need some peace. Well, stop watching snaps. <laughs> yeah, but I like to watch those things. They're entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're de amen. Entertaining. Detained for entry. That's what that means. Entertained. Amen. 
you being detained for the negativity to enter into you. And the peace of God, watch this, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? So, so whatever you have learned or received and heard, Paul says, he said, and seen in me, he said, I need you to do them. If you do these things, you'll be all right. So I'm trying to close here. Okay, Pastor, that's, that's close number one. So watch this. All I'm saying to you this morning, thanks to God, I'm, I'm really done. I had a little more, but I'm going to stop. Simply that. Don't worry about it. Give it to Jesus. And I guarantee you, you'll start feeling better. I guarantee you that headache will go away. Because when you cannot control it, that often means that you've got to give it to God. There, there's some people, hallelujah, that get on our last I know it's the truth. Pastor, not pastor nothing. There's some people that get on your last nerve. And there's nothing about the person except pray. And I guarantee if you pray and not try to fix them, because see, God never made you a fixer. God never made you a fixer. He's the fixer. And if you give them to the Lord, he will take care of them. I promise you. Hallelujah. Now, you really need to pray how he take care of them. Hello? Really? Because, see, I, don't, I know that the ways of a transgressor is hard. Ask me how I know, because I've been one. I'm not a transgressor. I love the Lord with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, and all my strength. I love him with everything I have, every fiber of my being. Hallelujah to God. Do I always get it right? No, I don't. But I strive every day to get it right. And as long as I keep my mind stayed on him, he said he keep those minds at perfect peace. His mind is stayed on him. I keep my mind stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah to God. And so I want to invite anybody to the altar this morning that needs your peace back, that needs to learn how to cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Tell you, you saints, there are things in your life God never made you in charge of to control. The only person you need to control is you. I said the only person, you, since you want to control something, control yourself. And I guarantee you, everything else, God will fix it. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just give God Oh, to 
walk with me. Oh, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me.
The Bible says that. I'm going to prove it right now in Scripture. He says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly a little bit, shall reap also sparingly a little bit, and he which soweth bountifully a lot, shall reap also bountifully a lot. Amen? Every man, every human being, according as he purpose in his or her heart, so let him or her give. Watch this. Not with attitude. God said, look here, look here. I, I'm not begging you for nothing. He said, so in other words, I don't want you to have an attitude. If you got an attitude giving me, your, giving your money back to me, which came from me anyway, he said, keep it. Amen. And, and I might be a little stingy when I give it back to you next time because you don't give it back to me. Hello? And it amazes me that all the silver and gold belong to God and when he gives us some of his silver and gold, we don't want to give none back to him. That, that is just amazing to me. I don't, I don't understand. He says, not grudgingly, all right, keep your money. Or of necessity, amen, that means if you need it, keep it. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen? God loveth over and over again, E-T-H, a cheerful giver. Glory to God. I'm trying to get some cheerful givers in the house. And this is the part I love. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Now, he's talking about the cheerful givers. Folks. So don't think you've got some grace coming and you don't give. <laughs> he's able to make all grace abound towards you that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. I mean, you know, it, it, it feels good that when Bill come around and you got enough to satisfy Bill and Bill don't become past due with some fees tacked on, tacked on to it. Hey, man, no, no, no. You got, you got enough to pay it the first time. Hallelujah to God. All sufficiency. That's what all sufficiency means. All sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. How do you know God has no lack? God, God is pandemic proof. God is recession proof. Hallelujah. God don't have no recession. And if God don't have a recession, that means you don't have one either. If you do what he asks you to do. Now, we don't beg for anything here at Glory Worship Center. But we do teach people that they should give, amen, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver, amen. I, I can teach this till I blow my face, and some people just ain't going to give. Okay, what you say, Pastor? Okay, uh, well, how about what the Bible say? <laughs> I ain't getting no amens in here, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So there's several ways to give, saints of God, several ways, amen, you can give. By envelope, just raise your hand, amen. Officers are standing by to have an envelope if you're giving cash. If you're making out a check, you do not need an envelope. The, the envelopes are only for cash, amen. <coughs> if you're giving electronically, and this will include people on Facebook and YouTube, you can go to Cash App, amen. Sister Vanessa, please put the full screen on for, for the um, for the online givers. Man, so they can see. Oh, I can see it, Pastor. No, you can see it. It's on the big screen now. Amen. So those of you who have never watched us online before, we have the ability to, to make the screen what you see here. That's all they see on Facebook. They don't see nothing else but that screen. Amen. And so there's several ways you can give. You can go to Cash App, DW, dollar sign DWC Manteca, or you can go online, dwcmanteca.org, or you can use Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, search Glory Worship Center, Manteca, and you can always send your gift to Glory Worship Center, 467 North Lincoln Avenue, that's in Lincoln, North Lincoln Avenue, Manteca, California, 95336, and watch how God blesses you. Hallelujah. I have my offering in my hand right now. Hallelujah. 
And if you are interested in membership, both of you who are viewing online and anybody here in the sanctuary, several ways you can do it. Amen. You can give us an email, dwcmantica at gmail.com, or you can give us a phone call at 209 234 3230. Those of you who are in the sanctuary now, amen, and want to be a member of Glory Worship Center, all you have to do is step out in the aisle, come right up here right now. We'll give you the right hand of fellowship and let you know what is required to become a member of Glory Worship Center. Amen. Hallelujah. Standing on your feet all over the building. Amen. God bless you. I mean, you know, it's so good to see y'all. Y'all look so good. You look happy. You look like you got joy in your heart. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Can we say, Lord Jesus? Gracious Father, we ask that you would bless every seed that is sown on this morning. In the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would multiply every seed that is sown, 60, 90, and 100 fold return. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory for it now. Now when the hymn who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. What I say to one, say to all, Jesus Christ is my Lord. I'm not going to worry about it. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have your heart.